Cannabis legalization keeps getting more and more popular, but have you ever thought about what kind of impact it's having on our planet? As someone who's been working in the cannabis industry for years, I've been thinking about this question for a long time. So in this video, we're gonna look at all of the ways that growing all of this legal weed is really contributing to the degradation of our whole planet. And I'm gonna show you some lesser known sides of the cannabis industry that really don't make any sense, and we're gonna look at what we could do to actually make a difference. One of the major concerns related Related to large-scale indoor cannabis cultivation is just the energy consumption. And that's because these big grow rooms use a ton of energy. Just the grow lights themselves take a ton of energy. And lots of these warehouses were running like 1100 watt double-ended high-pressure sodium bulbs. We might be running hundreds and hundreds of bulbs depending on the size of the grow facility. The lights in every flowering room are on for 12 hours a day. And when one set of lights is off, that just means another set of lights somewhere else is on so the building is always running a ton of lights and that's just for the flowering you also got the lights for veg and the lights for your clones and all of these massive grow lights and all of these massive grow ballast make a ton of heat so you're spending a whole lot of money to light your plants but you're also warming your building up by a lot and now the building is too hot for the plants to be happy in so now you also have to run really strong air conditioners like all the time so there goes a whole lot more electricity but you also have hundreds or maybe maybe even thousands of plants in an indoor space and you're watering them all the time so it gets really humid in the building too. Like more humid than the plants would want. So you also are running huge humidifiers all day every day. Not like little humidifiers you run at your house either. These are huge commercial grade humidifiers in like every grow room. They're all over the building. Plus it's Colorado so it gets really cold in the winter so we have to have a lot of heating too and you have to have plenty of ventilation and, and run tons of fans. There's just a whole lot of electricity being used in a big grow room. And that's just in one building. And there's a ton of these buildings just in this city. And there's a ton of cities just like this all over the US and in Canada. And they're starting to pop up in all kinds of other countries too. So overall, this is a lot of power we're using to grow weed that's just contributing to greenhouse gases. And if you were to look at the carbon footprint of the marijuana industry as a whole, it would probably be humongous. Just here in Denver, the Department Department of Public Health and Environment data from 2019 showed that nearly 4% of Denver's electricity is now devoted just to growing weed. And according to another estimate, indoor cannabis cultivation in the United States consumes around 1% of the country's total electricity usage. For a whole 1% of the country's electricity to be just for growing weed, that's a little crazy. It can also take a lot of water to grow cannabis plants. Growing cannabis outdoors or indoors takes more water than wheat, corn, soybeans, cotton, or rice. And a study reviewing the environmental impacts of indoor cannabis cultivation showed that on average, a cannabis plant consumes an estimated 22.7 liters or six gallons of water per day during the growing season. This can result in a decrease in groundwater levels and reduced stream flow. But that just sort of comes with indoor growing when you're doing all of this indoors rather than outdoors where you would usually grow plants it's just going to use a lot of energy because you have to fake an entire environment when there's a free one right outside but that's not the only way that weed is trashing the planet weed is like literally trashing the planet in a way that really aggravates me personally and if you're new here welcome to the strange show my name is matt i'm just a goofy stoner who teaches you all kinds of things about cannabis i work as a grower in colorado and on this channel we explore everything related to weed like expert guidance, practical tips, and up-to-date information, empowering you to make informed decisions and elevate your cannabis experience. So in states where cannabis is legal, the packaging requirements are usually really strict. Like you have to have child safe packaging, like child resistant containers. Lots of states make you have exit bags and you have to have this container in this bag and all kinds of shit before you're able to leave the store legally. And it's usually just tons and tons and tons of plastic. So much plastic trash comes from the dispensary. Like I lived downtown in Denver for many years and there would be a large percentage of tourists that would come through downtown and hit the dispensary to get some weed. And they would be walking down the street and all they need to do is smoke a joint and to go buy a joint, they get a plastic tube and a bag and a zip and all kinds of shit. And what do you think most of them do with this shit when they go walking down the road to smoke that weed? 
They just throw it on the fucking ground. You know how much weed trash I see on the ground all the time? Go walk around downtown in any big city where weed is legal and you're gonna see a bunch of weed trash on the ground. It's just inevitable and it sucks. And this is just plastic waste. It's not biodegradable at all. It's just gonna go to some landfill and be in the ground for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, didn't we have enough plastic waste already before we legalized weed? Does the weed industry have to add to this too? Can't we do something better? Of course we can do something better. And it, this is why it pisses me off so bad because it seems like the answer to what we could do is so obvious. And you might already have an idea of what answer I'm gonna say, but we're gonna cover that in just a second. But that's still not all because indoor cannabis cultivation also uses lots of pesticides and fertilizers and other chemicals that could be detrimental to human health or the environment. Because when we're using all of this stuff in the grow room, when we're using fertilizer or pesticides or any chemical or Clorox or anything we might be cleaning the grow room with, where do you think it all goes? We wash it all down the drain right into the municipal water supply with all the other water. It goes all to the same treatment plant that the same water that comes to my house that me and my family drink. And that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of shit we're putting in the water. And it's not just the grow I work at. There's a ton of grows in this city and there's a ton of cities like this city in this country and in Canada and in other countries. And there's a lot of indoor weed being grown and there's a lot of stuff going down the drain. And most of the stuff in the legal cannabis industry is highly regulated. So it's not gonna be anything really, really crazy, but but there's so much of it. You don't want a ton of pesticides, even if they are like regulated pesticides. You don't want a ton of those going into the water supply. It also doesn't seem good to have like a ton of nutrient salt runoff going into the municipal water supply. What if we're using some weird disinfectant to clean the table and I don't even know what's in it and I'm just cleaning the table and wash it down the drain. I don't know what that's doing. No one ever really cared. They just wanted to make the money. And now we're growing weed everywhere and we're flushing shit down the drain everywhere. And even if none of this stuff makes it through like the filtered water that ends up in your sink, the runoff from these chemicals could pollute the waterways, it could harm the fish, who knows. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that we should get rid of the cannabis industry, not at all. I love the cannabis industry and I love being part of the cannabis industry. I just don't want to feel guilty for all the shit we're doing to the planet. But there are a lot of things we could do to make this better, both on a large scale and on a small scale as individual consumers. For using less energy, the really the obvious answer is just shifting towards outdoor cultivation. This would use way less energy and way less water. You would have to be way more careful about what you use as a fertilizer since it would be going directly into the water source, like directly into the groundwater, but you could definitely do that responsibly. And even though some people might not prefer outdoor weed compared to indoor weed, I think that the average consumer wouldn't really care that much especially if outdoor weed was way more common and that was just what you were used to seeing. I think most people would just be happy that weed is legal and they can just go to the store and buy it. And of course there would always be a market for that really controlled environment indoor weed that was just really babied and is really beautiful. But that could be like the connoisseur weed instead of the industry standard because you can still grow beautiful weed outdoors. And most companies that grow weed would grow their weed outdoors if the environment was right and their state would allow it, but most states don't allow you to just grow big crops of weed outside. They want everything to be indoors, on camera, all locked up and safe and secure, and you gotta pay tons of taxes, and you gotta rent the building every month, and you gotta pay taxes every month on your rent, and you know, they just got a ton of rules and regulations, and they're not helping anything. Well, most of them aren't helping anything. And in a lot of places, outdoor growing just isn't possible because of your environment, but in those places, we could shift to like some sort of renewable energy. We could at least try use solar panels or wind turbines. I don't know, something, but nobody even seems to try. And I really understand why, because you need so much power to grow weed that say, if you were gonna power it all with solar panels, your solar panel field would have to be like 50 times bigger than your grow space. But you could at least cover your roof with solar panels, do something. This is also where those laws against driving weed from one state to another state really screw us over. Because there's lots of states where weed is legal to buy for adults, but you can't drive weed from California to Oklahoma and then sell it in a dispensary in Oklahoma. But if you could, that would change everything because then the states that could grow a ton of weed outside, they could just send that weed all over the country. And then everyone would be less dependent on these really high energy indoor grows. And as far as reducing the packaging waste and all the plastic garbage that comes from the cannabis industry, this
this one seems really easy to me. And it's really sort of frustrating to me because of how stupid it seems. So one thing that you might not have ever thought about about the weed industry is that we end up with a lot of plant waste. Because all this weed we're growing in this facility, really the majority of the weed gets thrown away. Because you gotta think, the only part that we really need is the buds. That's the only part we're trying to sell. So all through the vegetative cycle, every time like you're trimming some stems or some leaves off, those go right in the trash. All through the flowering cycle, anything we trim off the plant goes right in the trash. And a lot of times, even other things that you would think, well, of course they don't throw that away, like the sugar leaf from when you're trimming. A lot of times, even that just goes right in the trash. And a lot of times stuff like sugar leaf will go to make concentrates, but pretty much anything else besides the buds is gonna be waste. And even though this is just plant waste, it's literally just leaves and stems, we can't like just compost it, not at all. It's not that easy. The rule for here in Colorado, at least, is that we have to destroy the plant material until it's non-recognizable. So they expect us to chop up this weed so hard that it doesn't even look like weed. Or like mix it up with the used soil or something that it's like indistinguishable from marijuana. Which is not as easy as you might think. What we usually do is just like put it through a wood chipper or something like that and then maybe mix it with all of our old cocoa or our old soil. I've spent lots of hours at work in the weed industry just chopping up old weed plants. It's not really a fun day. Okay, I gotta interrupt real quick to show you this old video of me actually chopping up weed with a lawnmower. Those are weed plants in a little wooden box that I am chopping up with a lawnmower. Why did they have me do it with a lawnmower? I have no idea. Shout out to all the ghetto ass weed grows. But you would think, okay, cool. Now it's weed plants and dirt. So now you can just throw that in a compost pile, right? Cause it's just plants and dirt, but no, not at all. We have to put it in plastic bags. Then we have to put it in a garbage truck. Then that garbage truck goes to the regular landfill. And now we've just took dirt and plant and added plastic, more plastic plastic waste. That regulation really sucks because it makes us add a lot of plastic to the landfill that's f***ing really unnecessary. But it's also not just as easy as calling up the garbage man and saying, hey buddy, we got some trash. We definitely have to pay a higher fee for them to come pick up and dispose of cannabis waste. They're like, oh, marijuana waste? We're gonna tax the shit out of you for that. Because it's marijuana. We tax the shit out of everything related to marijuana. Didn't you know you're in the marijuana game? Everything related to marijuana is taxed heavily. Well, Welcome to the business. So in the legal cannabis industry, practically every grow everywhere is always producing tons of plant waste. Tons of plant waste that you have to wrap in plastic and send to a landfill. And then we're also putting the finished product in little plastic bags that go to the landfill. But why don't we just use the plant waste that we're all making to make hemp plastic? We could use this plant material to make all kinds of hemp plastic. You know how many waste stems we go through? Tons. Every single stem that's ever been grown in the legal cannabis industry has all went to waste. Like 90% of all of the leaves that have ever been grown in the legal cannabis industry have all went to waste. When all of this could have went to biodegradable hemp plastic. Wouldn't you rather buy your weed in biodegradable weed plastic made from the same weed that's in the jar? The jar and the weed inside are all from the same plant. That would be so sick. And it wouldn't make me feel nearly as bad when I seen one of the jars from the dispensary I grow weed for sitting in the gutter. Because I would know, oh, that's at least biodegradable hemp plastic. If I throw it in the trash and it goes to the landfill, it's going to degrade. First off, the weed company could avoid all the labor cost of like paying me or someone else to mulch up all of these weed plants. Then they could also avoid the high cost of getting the weed waste picked up by the trash companies. And then they could either use that product to make hemp plastic themselves or they could just give that product to a hemp plastic manufacturer to get a really good discount on hemp plastic packaging. Because to us at The Grow, all of this weed is just trash at this point anyways and we have to get rid of it. So if there was a company that would go around and offer to pick up people's weed waste for free, these grow facilities would be happy to give them their weed waste for free just to avoid paying the high fees to the garbage company. Because those fees really add up over a whole year because they're coming to pick up the trash 
last like once a week. Plus something way easier than that that just seems like a complete no brainer is just allowing us to reuse our old containers. We could just get one jar from the dispensary one time and then wash it out at home and take that same plastic jar back to the dispensary every single time we go. Maybe you have a bag or whatever it is, whatever you have, a bag, a jar, whatever, just wash it out and take it back every single time you go. Let me just bring my own container from home. Who gives a f I just need a jar. This is a plastic drink cup. Just put some weed in here. I'm going to take it home and seal it up when I get there. Who gives a f I mean, I understand the need for childproof containers, but there has to be a better way than one-time use plastic. And we have had things like this at dispensaries that I've worked at before. There was this company called Green for Green who describes themselves as the first recycling network for cannabis packaging. And the way it worked is you would just take in your old jars every time you went to the dispensary. So when I went in to get some new weed, I would bring my old jar from last time and the dispensary would give me a discount on the new weed I'm about to buy because I brought in my old jar. So the dispensary would incentivize the customer to bring back their old jar, and you just bring back your old empty jar, throw it in this cardboard box, and then the people who worked in the packaging department would just get those old containers, wash them out, sanitize them, put new labels on them, and use them all over again. And that dispensary eventually stopped doing that, and I have no idea why. We should have something like that at every dispensary everywhere. It's such a good idea. It's discounts for you as the customer. It's less overhead price for the store because they don't have to buy as much new packaging and it's less plastic waste in the landfill. It's a win, 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 win all the way around. And even you and I as individual customers can still play a significant role in supporting sustainability in the cannabis industry. First off, if you have access to these old jar recycling services like Green for Green, definitely take in your old jars. If your dispo doesn't do the Green for Green return or they don't do something like this, ask them to start. I'll link Green for Green's website down in the description. We can also help just by choosing products that have minimal packaging and buying from companies who actually care about sustainability. We don't really need a fancy bag with a box in it with some foil wrapping with a jar inside of that with 50 labels and holographic stickers, but companies still wrap everything up in all of this unnecessary stuff just to make it look more appealing while it's sitting on the shelf. They think that we're gullible enough to buy anything in a silly fancy jar or bag, so show them that they're wrong. You can also reduce the energy consumption that the weed you're buying contributes to by buying weed that's just grown with more sustainable practices. Like if your dispensary offers outdoor weed, that's one great way to promote this. Or even if they just have a greenhouse, that green greenhouse is using these grow lights a lot less than just a regular indoor warehouse because they're getting a large amount of their light from the sun and they're just supplementing it with the grow lights. So if you're buying outdoor weed or greenhouse weed, both of those are better. But even if we do everything we can, we got to make sure that these huge corporations like Monsanto don't take over the cannabis industry and completely ruin everything. And that isn't just some far off worry. Monsanto is actually already trying to buy up the entire cannabis industry. And I'll show you why that might lead to some very bad things in this video. So make sure you watch this video so you'll see why it's so important that we keep these big companies from taking our whole weed industry away from us. I'll see you there. Peace.